and he went in and there was time walking around it. Yeah. My foot hurt, my hip hurt. <laughs> well, we're few and far between this morning. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, a lot different from last Sunday to today. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to read scripture from Psalms chapter 29, starting at verse 1. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Yeah. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cinders. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cinders of Lebanon. Lebanon. He maketh them also to skip like a calf. Mm -hmm. Lebanon and Siron like a young uh, unicorn. The voice of the Lord divideth the flame of fire. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. The Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadrash. The voice of the Lord maketh the mines of Tukath and discovereth the forests. And in the temple doth every one speak of his glory. The Lord sitteth upon the flood, yea, the Lord sitteth king forever. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Amen. Does anyone give a psalmist? 33 in the red Will your soul be ready? 
ready for the nation's right and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin, and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Does anybody have a testimony? I'd like to stand up this morning to the Lord. He's been so good to me. It seemed like I could stand up every day and tell you how, what he does for me and, and how he treats me. And I'm so thankful for my family. The way they're, they love God, the way they worship God. And it makes a big difference in your life, too. I'm thankful for the sunshine and the Amen. beautiful weather that we're having. I'm enjoying it thoroughly. My wife's about to work me to death outside, but other than that, I hear it's pretty good too. But I'm, uh, I'm thankful for everything around me. I just want to thank God for letting me be here today. Yeah. And, and speaking of working to death outside, you know, we've been doing it too, but it's so nice to be able to sit down after you do something and enjoy it. And right. it says in the Bible to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Yes, so, yeah. right. you, you work hard to get something good out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Have we seen 32 the song right this next to us? Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion, bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. While we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sun, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be, when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory, let us then be true. When we all get to heaven, what a 
She's uh, decided to get married, but she's uh, going to have a satanic wedding service. Wow. And I thought, you know, that's, that's so terrible. Uh, what does your mother think? You know, her mother's the one that's going to be conducting the ceremony. Mm -hmm. So we need to pray for those people. Yes, I okay. do. The devil walks to and fro every day, That's right. looking to for he, someone he can devour. And there's a lot of people that fall into that. And he's a laughing and a wringing his hands together. Wow. And my friend um, that I worked with that had been in ICU, she did pass away Wednesday morning, so I prayed for her family because even though she was sick for a long time, they, you never can be Julius, our Almighty Father in heaven, we praise you, my Savior God. Lord God, we just look to you in your holiness and your righteousness and your almighty, wonderful glory, Father. Lord God, we're just so thankful, Father, we can bow before your throne. Lord God, knowing that you hear our voice, dear Lord God, knowing that you love your children, Father. Lord God, we're so thankful for Jesus, dear Lord God, and for him taking away our sin, Father. Lord God, we just want to praise you, Father, for who you are, Lord God, for there is none like you, Father. Lord God, how you love us here, Lord, ever so dearly. And Father God, how you're ever with us and ever present, Father. Lord God, I just praise you, my Savior, for who you are. Lord God, I thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege that you let us gather in your name. And Lord God, that you give us the spirit to worship you, Father. Lord God, we just want to thank you, dear Lord God, for... Christ taking our sin away, Father. Lord God, for making us new creatures, Father. Lord Heavenly Father, we praise you for your word, Father, that encourages us every day. Father, that builds our faith, dear Lord, and strengthens us, dear Lord God, that we might be able to face anything that comes our way, Father, through your strength and through your power. And Father God, Lord, we thank you, my Savior God, Lord, for the request, dear Lord, this morning. Father God, Lord, you told us to cast all of our care upon you, Father. Lord God, we thank you, dear Lord God, for helping the family that Maria mentioned, Father. Lord, we thank you, dear Lord God, for saving them, dear Lord God. Lord, for convicting their hearts, drawing them to you, dear Lord, and helping them, Father God. Lord, to trust upon you for everything that they need, Father. And Lord God, we pray for the man that she met. Thank you, dear Lord, for giving her the spirit of boldness to talk to that man. And Lord God, thank you for his request, Father. Lord God, I pray that you would bless that man, dear Lord. Help him, Father. And Lord God, we pray, Father God, Lord, for the girl that Mom mentioned, dear Lord. Father God, Lord, convict their hearts, Father God, that they would realize who Christ is 
that they would realize, dear Lord God, that the hell is not prepared for us, but for the devil and his angels, Father. And Lord God, we thank you, dear Lord, that you have made a place for us, Father God. Lord, that we might be with you forever, dear Lord God, in glory. Hallelujah, Father God, Lord, that there won't even be any heat in heaven, Father. And Lord God, there will not be a tabernacle, there will not be a temple, but Father God, you will be the temple and the tabernacle thereof. I praise you, Holy Father, for all that you've promised us and all that you do, dear Lord, every day. Father, be with Robin and Autumn as they travel back, Father. And Lord God, I just pray for your abundant blessing on their heritage girls, Father. Lord, we thank you for their testimony, Father. And Lord, we give you the praise. Anoint this service this morning, I pray, Father, for your glory and for your name. Father, anoint Mom as she speaks. And then, dear Lord God, that it wouldn't be her, but that it would be you, Father, that speak to us, Father. And Lord, we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, I pray. And amen. amen. Does anybody have a song quest? I think it's page Troy the other day that uh, anybody would be better at this than I am, so I hope y'all just for just put up with my lisping, stammering tongue, as the hymn says, and, and just uh, bear with me. Uh, 
there's uh, do y'all remember what last Sunday's lesson was about? It was about being called by Jesus. Remember, Amen. remember, he called the the fishermen and said, "Follow me," and, and they followed him right away. Um, this week's lesson is about being a light in the dark world that we live in, and helping someone else to uh, follow Jesus. Uh, our memory verse is Matthew twenty-eight. 18 through 20. Let's see, see if we can Let's say it together, okay? Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So say that again for the end of the lesson. Um, let's see. How many of you eaten, have you ever eaten potato chips? <laughs> have you ever eaten pretzels? Um, Think about how they taste. How do they taste? Are they sweet? Or are they salty? Salty. Yeah. Uh, wonder what they taste like without any salt. They'd be kind of bland, wouldn't they? They wouldn't taste very good with they without any salt. Uh, most of us are uh, have eaten all these foods before. And uh, it doesn't matter whether you like them with salt or without salt. What does matter is that you recognize that salt, recognize salt, and know that salt adds a certain flavor to different foods. Salt is a seasoning that was popular when Jesus lived on the earth, and salt, you know, is always also used to pre preserve stuff. You know, people used to put salt in. Uh, meat and stuff like that and, and preserve it. And so salt is really important. We need it to survive. And Jesus said to his disciples that they were like salt. Amen. Yeah. Uh, can you open your Bibles to Matthew 5, 13? Do you have your Bible, baby? You don't have your Bible? Yeah. Matthew 5, 13. Salt. Uh, you know, uh, do you think? Uh, 
Why do you think the followers of Jesus are kind of salt on the earth? Because we're found everywhere, just like salt is. Right? And it's important for us to be followers of God, just like salt is important. And it adds flavor to life. Yes, it does. Amen. By sharing the love of God with others and to make a difference in this world. Uh, we all know that a strong flavor of salt, uh, that there's a real strong flavor in salt. But uh, this flavor, just like our impact on the world, can be changed. It can diminish after a time if you let the world in. Um, I, got, I brought some stuff. I hope I don't make a mess with this. <laughs> I was supposed to bring a clear picture, but I didn't have one. So I had to bring this thing. some water, which would represent the world. water that you add, which is the more world that you add into your life, the less strong it is. It just keeps getting weaker and weaker and weaker, doesn't it? Okay. Now y'all tasted that. It's a little salty, but it's not like it was before, is it? See, Russ? It's weak, isn't it? Still kind of rough, though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> now you know you need to go get a drink of water, don't you? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> We know that there's salt mixed into this water, but how was the flavor different from the way it was when we took it before? It's weaker. It's weaker, isn't it? Yeah. And the flavor of the salt, the more you add the water, the salt will be completely gone after a while. Uh, if Jesus' disciples lose their saltiness, what can happen to our world? What could happen if we don't, if we don't tell people about God and, and uh, show them the right way to live? What, 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 would, what could happen in the world? It could get even worse than it already is. That's right, amen. Um, evil would rule the world, which you know, a lot of 
times it does now. Uh, being like Saul is important for Jesus' disciples. Okay, now we're going to read uh, Matthew 5, 14, and 16. Are you ready? You want to read 14 for me, please? Ye are the light of the world, and a city that is set on a um, hill cannot, cannot be hid. 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 Yes, you want to do 15 for me, please? Now that the men light a candle and put it under a bushel, Put it on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Okay. And then I then I read sixteen. It says, "Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven." Amen. So that's why we sing, "Yeah, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel." No. Yeah. Swallowers besides salt. In our verse that we just read, what does he call us? This little, what, this little what? Light. He calls us light. We're the light of the world. Uh, what ways do you think that the followers of Jesus are like light? share God's love with others, don't we? Even people that we don't really like a whole lot sometimes, we can still love them, can't we? We can still love them through God. Uh, if Jesus if Jesus' disciples, which we are, if we've accepted God, and we've decided uh, to follow Him and try to do what He would have us to do, uh, we are His disciples. And if we don't let our light shine, if we don't show people God through us, what could happen? Darkness would rule. Yeah. And and all right. So shining our light for Jesus is, is very, very important. You know, the, the, uh, the overall uh, thing that we're studying in our Sunday School lessons is uh, saying yes to Jesus uh, and growing with, through Jesus and doing what he would have us to do. Uh, we want to become the best followers of Jesus that we can possibly be, don't we? We took the first step last week when Mommy taught the lesson about uh, saying yes when Jesus calls us to do certain things. God knows that I'm terrible about getting up in front of people. But you know, I want to do what Jesus Amen. wants me to do. Uh, so, um, we need to promise help others to remain faithful disciples as well. Uh, did you remember to pray for someone this week and to encourage somebody that uh, in your walk along uh, the way this, this week? I mean, did you kind of uh, you weren't here last week? Yeah, that's right. But we can always pray for somebody that, uh, that needs our help and and needs encouragement, and you know everybody needs that from time to time. There's not anybody that never needs prayer. I need prayer every day, and I need to talk to God every day because uh, He's my best friend. Amen. What's that? What's that? Yeah. Uh, 
Jesus calls his disciples the salt of the earth and the light of the world because godly actions outshine, outshine evil actions. Amen. If you're in a real, real dark room and you can't even see that your hand in front of your face, but you have a little candle and you light that little candle, or you know what, I've got a little tiny flashlight and it's only about this long and it's just a little tiny thing. But you know, if I had that little flashlight and I turned it on in this real, real dark room, what would happen? The darkness would flee, wouldn't it? It would go away. And the light would be there instead of the darkness. So disciples of Jesus are light because they bring light to the darkness of the world. Uh, disciples of Jesus are salt because we bring flavor to a flavorless world. Uh, can you think of somebody this week that you could, uh, who could really use uh, some salt of the earth and the light of Christ because they're lonely or sick or sad because, that, or somebody that needs an invitation to church? You know, that'd be shining your light. So if you go to somebody and you ask somebody to come to church, that would be shining your light. Um, so, do you know anything, any other ways that you can be a uh, salt or a light for a person? You know what, you could get a little candle, just get one of those little tiny candles, you know, that are in little doors or something. You could take that candle to them and uh, make them a, make them a, a candle out of, out of paper, construction paper. Real pretty colored candle. You can take them a package of microwave popcorn. Invite them to come and share some popcorn with you. Uh, you think you could think of a better way to be salt or light for this special person? You decide. Be the salt and light for someone you know this week. And we'll take time during our next lesson next week to hear about how you decided to be a light to somebody, okay? So let's uh, let's say our memory verse again. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Okay, and you sing. Second, Ray, Ray. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. All right. Good job. So, uh, y'all want to sing? Oh.
Oh, we got to say the Bible verses, and y'all are going to have to, I mean, Bible books. Yeah, I'm going to have to tell me because I don't know all the actions. Do you all? I hope y'all do because I sure don't know them. Okay? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Psalm of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, and Sobadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, and God, Zechariah, Malachi, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But Luke is. <laughs> Acts and Romans, first and second Corinthians. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. Colossians. First and second Thessalonians. First and second Timothy. Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James. Thank you. 
I do one ninety seven in the red book. I've been looking to put it. You ever get a song in your head and can't get out? This is a song I like getting in my head and keeping it there. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> there are people singing it. Just over in the glory land With the blood 
shout and sing just over in the glory land. Glad the Zen is the Christ, the Lord and King, just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land, I'll join the happy angel band, just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land, there with the mighty host I'll stand, just over in the glory land. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord's made. This is the Lord's day. Yeah, Amen. And uh, you know, when they uh, came to uh, uh, Jesus' tomb, uh, Mary and Martha, uh, the Bible said that they came there on the first day of the week. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it's the Lord's day. John said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Sorry. Amen. And uh, I'm glad uh, that uh, we recognize the Lord's day, the day that our Savior uh, raised from the grave. And and I'm thankful for that, and, and uh, I'm thankful uh, to, to that the Lord allows us to worship uh, on the Lord's Day. Uh, if you would, look with me at Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, and uh, our, our uh, uh, sermon lesson today that the Lord has given us is uh, Jesus has a new body. And this, this, this is about living in His victory, and we've been, uh, we've been looking about how to uh, attain the victory, but once we attain victory, we need to live in the victory that the Lord has given us. And uh, amen, I'm glad that uh, the Bible tells us, thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory uh, through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, and the, the Bible tells us uh, that, uh, that Satan is already defeated. Uh, we don't have to wait for him to be cast into the lake of fire for him to be defeated. He is already defeated. Amen. You know, the Bible says that he goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But the Bible says that when John was in the spirit on the Lord's day, uh, that he, the Bible said that he saw a book in the hand of him that sat upon the throne uh, that was written within, without, and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And he said that he saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, saying, who is worthy to open the book? and to loose the seals thereof. And he says that no man was found in heaven, nor on earth, neither under the earth, to open the book, and neither even to look thereon. And the Bible said that he wept much because no man was found worthy to open the book, uh, and neither to read it, nor to even look thereon. He says, but one of the elders came to him, uh, and he said, weep not, for behold the lion of the tribe of Judah, not as a lion. He said, the lion of the tribe of Judah hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. Amen. I'm so glad that my Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And I'm so glad that Jesus said, now is the prince of this world cast out. Amen. Amen. Now is he defeated. Amen. I'm so glad that Christ defeated him at the cross. Hallelujah. Amen. Had they known what would happen, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But amen, glory, hallelujah. God had a plan, amen, to give the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's good to live in victory. I'm thankful today for the victory that God has given those. Whosoever will, I'm, amen, I'm glad that it's whosoever will. I'm glad that it's not for uh, any certain any certain race. I'm glad that it's not for any certain uh, uh, caller, uh, that it's not for any certain nationality, but God said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And amen. amen, we can live in that victory each and every day. So look with me, if you would, in Genesis chapter 3, and we're going to begin reading at verse 1. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm so thankful, I'm so thankful uh, that the Lord uh, did all of his works openly. Uh, the Bible said uh, that it tells us in the book of Colossians that he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. 
Amen. I'm so glad that what Christ did, he didn't do hidden somewhere. But amen, the things that Christ does, he does openly. And he's, you know what? We're not to be ashamed of Jesus Christ. Right. But the serpent, the enemy, he does things in darkness. Yes. He does things deceptive and he hides. Yeah. And Paul says, Paul said, he said, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent that beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. And so we're going to read here about that subtly uh, in Genesis chapter 3. The Bible says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And let us pray together before God Almighty. Father, Lord, we praise you, my Savior. Lord God, for your infallible word, Father. Lord, which lives and abides forever. And Father God, Lord, I ask you, dear Lord, only this one thing this morning, to honor your word. Father God, Lord, to honor your truth, Father, and to send it forth, dear Lord, uh, dear Lord, with authority, uh, dear Lord God, in plainness of speech, Father, help me, I pray, Lord, that I may uh, be a blessing, dear Lord God, to these your people, that Father God, Lord, that we might grow uh, by your word and your truth, and Father, we'll give you all the praise, in Jesus' name I pray, and amen. The Bible said right there that the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. This is the very foundation of all sin. It is the very foundation of the, the inward wickedness of man's heart. This is the very foundation. What is that very foundation that very foundation is self-consciousness. When man sinned in the garden, he lost God-consciousness and he gained self-consciousness. He began, he began to see himself as who he was without God. Mankind was only God-conscious before this. Glory be to God, I'm looking to the day when we go to heaven because when I go to heaven, I'm only going to have God consciousness. Amen. This corruptible is going to put on incorruption and this mortal is going to put on immortality. And I will only have God consciousness. Amen. There will be no more self-consciousness. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. But this is the root of mankind's problems. That's right. This is the very root and the very essence is consciousness of self and non-consciousness of God. Amen. Because man, that this Satan knew that if he could get Eve to do this, that their eyes would be opened and they would see themselves, but no longer see God for who God was. See, brother, that is the problem with today's world. The world cannot see Jesus. Those that are lost cannot see him. But we see Jesus made a little lower than the angels, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews. Amen. If you've been saved, you can see Jesus for who Jesus truly is. Amen. This self-consciousness causes men to fear men more than they do God. This self-consciousness causes men to obey men more than they do God. This self-consciousness causes men to not do the things that God would call them to do. That's right. The Bible says in John 12, nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him. 
They believed that the Pharisees, the chief rulers of the synagogue, they could not deny who He was because of the miracles that He did. Because of the power and the grace that He walked in. They could not deny that he, who He was. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess them lest they should be put out of the synagogue. They wouldn't openly confess. They were afraid. Even when the blind man, when the blind man, when Jesus had healed the blind man, He told him to go and wash in the pool, which is called Siloam. And the Bible says that He came, He went and washed, and He was able to see. And, and the, uh, the Pharisees brought Him, and they said, Who did this? Who made you uh, to see? And He says, A man named Jesus. Uh, he anointed my eyes, and I went and washed, and now I see. And they said, This man's a sinner. Give God the glory. And He says, Whether he be a sinner or not, I know not. But what I know I was blind, yet now I see. And glory be to God. Hallelujah. Uh, brother, uh, they could not deny him. But brother, the, his parents, the Bible said that his parents were afraid to confess. Because the Bible said that they were afraid they'd be put out of the synagogue. They said, go and ask him yourself. He is of age. Ask him yourself. <laughs> and all the man could do was tell what he had seen. That's all God's asking of his people. Is, brother, what have you seen? Have you had any? That's what a witness is. God is only looking for witnesses. He's looking for lawyers. He's looking for witnesses. Have you seen Jesus? These people wouldn't confess Him. They were afraid they'd be put out of the synagogue. Why? Verse 43, they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. They would rather be patted on the back. This is self-consciousness. This is some people today, brother, even Christians are afraid of man. The brother, you should not fear man. Amen. I'll tell you who you should fear. Amen. Fear him that can destroy both soul and body in hell. Amen. Don't fear what man's going to think about you. You better be concerned about what God thinks. You only have one that you need to please. Amen. That's what makes it easy. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God just to be conscious of God, not self-conscious. Glory be to God. The test it tells us here in James 1 and 8 that a double-minded man is unstable in all right. his ways. Every way. If you're double-minded, you are unstable in all your ways. Amen. The Bible, the Bible said that the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, if thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if that light that is in thee be darkness, uh, how great uh, is that darkness. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. God wants our eyes to be fixed on Jesus. Uh, and glory be to God that Jesus is the author of our salvation. Uh, Jesus is our righteousness. Jesus is our strength. Uh, Jesus is my advocate. Uh, Jesus is the Lamb of God. Jesus is the line of the tribe of Judah. It's Jesus, hallelujah, that gave, gives us a God's righteousness. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not one day it's me and then the next day it's Jesus and then another day it's for you and then another day it's Jesus. It's Jesus, hallelujah, that died yes. for our Amen. sins, that gives us the glory and hallelujah, the, the, the righteousness, the consciousness that God desires for us to have. God doesn't desire for us to be double-minded. I remember when I was a sinner, and I can remember, brother, that I'd act one way around mom and dad. And I'd act another way around my friends. And brother, I tell you what, I was a double-minded man. Yeah. And you know what? I was ashamed to act one way around mom and dad the same way that I acted around my friends. Amen? Can anybody test witness to that? Yes. yes, sir. He was ashamed to get around mom. He was ashamed to get around dad and to say the things. And maybe something might slip out of your mouth. That you would have said around your friends, but you didn't want to say around mom and dad. Yeah. And brother, then you get corrected. Yeah. Amen. Glory be to God for that fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm glad for parents to fear the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And brother, I knew I was wrong. I knew I was a sinner. I knew something was wrong, brother, because I was a double-minded man. Yeah. I was trying to live two lives, but I tell you, brother... You come to Jesus and He'll make you whole. Amen. Amen. You come to Jesus and you won't be ashamed of your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. You'll hallelujah walk in His victory. That's what we need. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you the same person who you're around? No matter who you're around? Do you act like a sinner when you get around sinners? 
You know what the Bible says? To have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but reprove them. That doesn't mean that you can't go places, brother. That means that when you go, you're to be a Christian. Amen. You're to be a Christian, brother. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. You do the things that are right in the midst of a wicked and a perverse nation. And glory be to God. Hallelujah. you got to go where there's fish to catch fish, don't you, Roger? Amen. Hallelujah. You don't go to the mud puddle. you Brother, you go to the pond. You go where the hallelujah, where there's deep water. Hallelujah. Are we double-minded? Brother, I don't, glory be to God. Here's the cure. The cure for that double-minded. Jesus answered and said unto Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, cannot see the kingdom of God. You can't see it. You cannot see, you cannot... You can, now, Adam and Eve, when they ate of the tree of the fruit of knowledge of good and evil, they could see themselves. They could see their consciousness. They had self-consciousness. But Jesus says, look, this is the cure. He said to Nicodemus, art thou a ruler of the Jews and you know not these things? If I testify unto you of, 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 of earthly things, how shall you believe heavenly things? The glory be to God. He's, he told him, he says, you must be born again. And he says, how can a man be born when he is old? Shall he enter into his mother's womb the second time and be born? And Jesus said, marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. Except you be born again, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You must be born again. Now, brother, you can take on tradition. Uh, you, know, you, can take on, uh, uh, you can take on rules and laws. Uh, and you can do all these things and still not be born again. You're to be born again. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Now, brother, you can do all kinds of good things in the flesh. Oh, yes, sir. It was Peter who was trying to do good things in the flesh when Paul rebuked him to the face. And he says, you, uh, you're trying to compel the Gentiles uh, to live as the Jews do. Glory be to God. I'm so glad that I'm not justified by that old wicked, rotten flesh. Amen. Amen. I'm glad it's the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Amen. You know what the Bible tells me? That there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. Makes me want to shout. Amen. To be free from the law of sin and death. The law of the Spirit of life in Jesus. Hallelujah, they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Jesus said, you better be born again or you're not going. You better be born again or you can't even see it. You can't even see it. Have you been born again? The Bible tells us there in Luke chapter 17 that they demanded of Jesus when his kingdom would come. They wanted to see, they wanted to see the kingdom they were picturing a king coming with an army, a mighty army. And brother, it's coming. It's going to happen. Yeah. Oh, believe you me. Yeah. Brother, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess right. that Jesus is Lord. I'm telling you, there's a millennial reign that's coming. Yeah. <laughs> and hallelujah, Jesus is coming. He's going to be riding on a white horse. Uh, and it's going to, his vesture is going to be dipped in blood. Uh, and his name is called the Word of God. Uh, and he treads the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of God Almighty. Uh, and I'm coming with him. Hallelujah. Uh, and glory be to God. I'm telling you, it's coming. But first, the Lamb of God had to come. Amen. And to die for our sin. Was it not the Lamb that had to die in Egypt? On the altar before they went to the promised land. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. The lamb had to come first. Yeah. And brother, the Bible told us that Jesus has said that the kingdom of God comes not with observation. And he says, neither shall they say low here or low there. there for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Amen. He is inside of you. Brother, this, 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 this uh, I, can't, I can't put it in words, hallelujah. It's so wonderful, hallelujah, that the kingdom of God is inside of us. If you have been born again, you have the kingdom of Almighty God inside of you. You no longer are only self-conscious. 
Brother, there are those in this world today who are only self-conscious. They can only see themselves, so they seek the things that please themselves. You know what God told Abraham? He said to get out of that land that you're in with those pagans. and You know, that's, that's being saved. When you're saved, you, God takes you out of that. But you are set apart. Amen? He takes you and He sets you apart from the world. To come out from among them and be ye separate. Amen? That doesn't mean that we're out of this world, but we're separate from this world. I mean, the man who, was, who had the legion of demons, he wanted to go with Jesus and be on the boat, and Jesus said, no, you go and tell your friends what great compassion the Lord has showed you. And glory be to God. He told Abraham to get out of your country from, from his father. And he says, and unto a land that I will show thee. And he says, and I'll bless those that bless thee. And I'll make thou, and, I'll, and I'll curse those that curse thee. And he says, and, and, and I'll make you a blessing. And he says, and, and thou shalt be a blessing. You know what, brother? The difference in Christians and the difference in the lost is Christians desire to be a blessing. But a sinner seeks for himself. A sinner wants what he wants for himself because it's all he can get right now. Right. Give me, give me, give me, give me all I, all I can get now because I have no hope for tomorrow. That's right. I'll tell you, brother, I'm looking for the blessed hope Amen. and the glorious Amen. appearing of my great God and my Savior Jesus. Yeah, praise God. Hallelujah. My hope is not here. Set your affection on things above praise and not right. on Amen. things below. Hallelujah. Wheresoever your heart is, there will your treasure be also. Hallelujah. Amen. Play up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust doth not corrupt and where thieves cannot break through and steal. This world's blinded, brother. They're blinded by their own self-consciousness. Yes, they are. The Bible says if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. And whom the God of this world. Now you notice in that that it uses a little g. Mm -hmm. And whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, big G, uh -huh. hallelujah, should shine unto them. Hallelujah. Uh, what were we being, being taught there earlier? Uh, uh, the, uh, the, a light that is set on a hilltop cannot be hid. Amen. Neither is it put under a bushel, but let your light shine. Amen. Uh, glory be to God. Uh, brother, the God of this world, He wants people's minds to be blinded. He wants to blind them. Amen. But we're not blind. Amen. I was made to see, brother. Hallelujah. I once was blind, but now I can Amen. see Jesus. Amen. Then it's about Christ, our Savior. Amen. God gives us a godly consciousness when we're saved. What does con I had to look at that word conscious. And, and con means control. It simply means control. Sheus is knowledge, similar to conscience. It's control of knowledge. So does God, let me ask you a question, does God control your knowledge? Or does yourself control your knowledge? <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you have self-consciousness or do you have God-consciousness? I tell you, if you're born again, you'll have godly consciousness. That's right. You'll be godly consciousness. I'm not saying that you'll acknowledge God. Because James 2 and 19 says that thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well, the devils also believe, and they tremble. That's right. They tremble. Don't Amen. tell me that the devil don't fear God. That's right. Because yeah. right. I know what the Bible says. Glory be to God. They tremble. They know who God is. They know who Jesus is. What hast thou to do with me, thou son of the most high God? Is what the legion of demons said. Right. They were scared to death of him. They trembled. At his presence. Hallelujah. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says in Psalm chapter, chapter 91, he says, And thou shalt tread upon the lion and the dragon, the young lion and the dragon, shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I set him on high, because he hath known my name. Amen. And the Bible says, glory be to God, that he is under our feet. He's defeated. That's right. Does God have control of your knowledge? The Bible tells us there in Hebrews chapter 9. I love the book of Hebrews because it's a book of better things. Better things. The blood of Christ speaks better things than that of Abel. Now, brother, we've obtained a better salvation. But it says here in chapter 9 that Christ being come a high priest 
of good things, uh, uh, better things to come. Uh, and the Bible says uh, that he entered into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us. Uh, uh, brother, that neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us. Uh, if the, for if the blood of bulls and of goats uh, and if the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify to the purifying of the flesh, uh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, uh, who offered himself without spot to God, uh, uh, through the eternal spirit purge your conscience uh, from dead works to serve the living God. God will take control of your knowledge, <laughs> brother, if you'll let him. If you'll let God take control of your knowledge, he'll, brother, he'll purge it. He'll purge it from dead works. He'll purge your knowledge from the works of the flesh, whether they be good or bad. You know, it was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that they ate. A lot of people like to think, oh, it's, boy, it, it just makes man evil. No, let's, listen, man thought that man was good. That's what man's, a lot of man's problem is, is they're so self-conscious that they think they're good enough to go to heaven. Right. They think that they can do enough or work enough or abstain from this or abstain from that or keep this tradition or keep that tradition enough that they'll go to heaven. But I'm telling you, you'll know why it's entering the kingdom of heaven unless you're born again. That's right. Amen. You must be born of the Spirit. You must confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Yeah. He is the Lord, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, Lord means He's my Master. Uh, uh, Jesus means He's my Savior. Uh, Christ means He's my coming Messiah. He is the Lord, uh, Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. It excites me, brother. The blood of Christ took control of my knowledge when I got saved. Amen. And I no longer, I no longer have to dwell in my past. Yeah. I no longer have to dwell in sin. I no longer have to carry that burden. The Bible says, let us lay aside the weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. I'm so glad for who Jesus is. Godly consciousness. We need to have evidence of godly consciousness in our life. Paul was so concerned about this under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, he literally wrote that he was dead. In other words, that he had been crucified with Christ. He says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live, in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me, and he gave himself for me. This life that I live now, it's not me. It's not me. Where I walk, where I go, the things that I do, it's not me. It's God. Amen. God guides me. He walks with me. Yeah. He talks with me. He tells me that I'm His own. I've been bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It is good to be saved. It's good that that old man's dead. Yeah. I love to hear that song. The old man dead. He's crucified. He died with Jesus. Amen. The day that I came forward right. and I knelt down before him, that old man died. Yeah. That day that I was baptized, that old man was buried. And that new man came up and resurrected. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6 that if we be dead with him, we shall also be raised Amen. with him. Amen. Brother, Hallelujah. Paul said it wasn't just one time for him. He said, I do it every day. Every day I'm going to die to that old man. When I wake up in the morning, I'm going to die to that old man because it's of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning in the book of Lamentations chapter 3. Amen. In verse 20, they're new every morning. Every day that I'm born, every day that I wake up, I'm, I'm glory be to God. I'm in the life of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Acts 17, when Paul was uh, talking to the people uh, on Mars Hill, the Bible says there, the Bible says that they had a, an image of the un, unknown God that they were worshiping. And Paul said, told them, he said that they should seek the Lord if happily they might fear after him, feel after him, and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. Brother, each day that you wake up, I love to hear 
I thank God for it. I love to hear Rusty pray. Amen. I love to hear him pray. Yes. We were out the other day, and he began praying in public while we were eating. He said, Lord God, thank you for another day of breath and another day of life. Amen. The Bible says right here, Genesis 2 and 7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man came, became a living soul. Did you know that you are not alive on your own today? It's in him that you live and move and you have your being. The Bible says in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Amen. That's Jesus. Amen. They weren't able to see Jesus. Yes. When you were lost, you can't see Jesus. You can't see the kingdom of God. You are blind. Yeah. You are blind from the kingdom. But the Bible says that in Him we live. Yes. We move. We have our being. The life which we now live in the flesh we live by the faith of the Son of God. Yes. It's Jesus who lives inside of us. Godly control of knowledge. Godly conscious. No longer self-consciousness. Brother, whichever one you feed the most is going to be the one that shows if, if you are dwelling on self, guess what's going to come out? Self. self. Hallelujah. But if you dwell on God, God will come out. That's right. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You know it's not what goes into your body that defiles you. There's many. There is many today who will, help, brother, they'll look at meat and they'll look at drink and now look at holy days. You know what the Bible says? Let no man judge you therefore in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day, which are a shadow and a type of the things to come. They were all a shadow right. and a type of Jesus. Yeah. They were just pointing to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what the Sabbath pointed to. It pointed to my Lord. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. It's Jesus. Right. He's the answer. Amen. It's that simple. They couldn't. They could, They would not accept it in his day, brother. The darkness comprehended it not. Godly consciousness. We are the body of Jesus. Amen. That was the title of the lesson. Is Jesus has a new body? Oh yeah, he was glorified and he had the glorified body. But brother, now you are his hands. You are his mouth. You are his feet. Hallelujah. You are the eyes. The eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the whole earth looking for them whose heart is perfect toward him that he might show himself strong. God uses you Amen. to see somebody that's in need. Yes. He uses you to be a blessing to that one sure. who says, I need prayer. He uses you for that. You are the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. No longer it's about self. No longer it's just about being consumed in one's own sin and wickedness and filthiness and rottenness. But it's full of godliness and it's godly power and it's godly victory and it's God consciousness. Hallelujah. Amen. That shows forth. That's right. As the body is one and hath many members and all the members of that one body being many, or one body, so also is Christ. We're many members of the body of Jesus. For by one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. There's only one God. Amen? I'm glad there's not many. Hallelujah. Oh, there's many idols. Yes. Sure, there's many idols. But there's only one God. Amen. Hallelujah. There's only one God. Whew, I like that. Amen. I like it that there's only one. Yeah. Hallelujah. Evidence of godly consciousness. The Bible says in 1 John 4 and 17, Herein is our love made perfect that we might have boldness in the day of judgment. Did you know that you can have boldness in the day that you stand before God? 
You know why? Because perfect love casts out all of your fear. Perfect love. If you have perfect love, the perfect love of God in your heart, you're not going to stand before Him ashamed. Right. You'll stand before Him covered in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. God takes away your sin. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Did you hear me this morning? Your sin is covered and taken away by the blood of Jesus. The debt has been paid for. You cannot do it yourself. It has already been done. Amen. You can have boldness, confidence in the day of judgment. In the day of judgment. You know, I, I, I've, seen, I've seen people right on their deathbed scared half to death. Yeah. Brother, I pray. I pray that I'm not like that. Right. I really do. I pray that I'm not scared of my deathbed. I don't want to be like that. Right. I don't want to be able to say, you know what, son? You know what, daughter? You know what, grandson? Granddaughter? I don't want you to worry about daddy. Yeah. I don't want you to worry about Papa. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's just one step between me and death. It's just one. It's just over in the glory land. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the glory be to God. I'm going to see Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible says that I'm in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Amen. For me to live as Christ, to die is gain. Yeah. It's gain. Glory, hallelujah. Herein is our love made perfect that we might have boldness in the day of judgment because as He is, so are we in heaven. So are we in this world. As He is, so are we in the... Jesus has a new body. It's you. <laughs> it's you. It's God consciousness. God, God has control of your knowledge. Submit yourself unto the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. Resist the devil yeah. and he'll flee. Yeah. Submit yeah. yourself to God. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do. Because I go unto my Father. Yeah. Jesus said, it's expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But when he comes, he'll reprove the world of sin and of righteousness. Amen? That's what he does. That is the job of the Holy Spirit. Did you know that the Holy Spirit inside of you, it'll reprove that light, that darkness. When that light shines inside of the darkness, the darkness is reproved. It's pushed back. Amen. He that only he, he that uh, now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And the problem the Bible tells us that we are the ones that God is using. We are the salt of the earth. Amen. We are the preservation of the earth. We are the light of the world. It is the it is Jesus shining through us that holds back the wickedness in this world. Yeah. Jesus said, "Greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father." God will use you to reprove sin. I didn't say that God's going to make you a judge. No. God's going to use you to reprove sin. Yeah. Out of love. God will use you to reprove sin. Brother, if most of the time, most of the time, you won't even know that you're doing it. Because if you knew that you were doing it, you're taking glory for yourself. But brother, glory be to God. Hallelujah. All you need to do is speak the word. All you need to do is to be a witness. And if you're a witness, it will reprove the darkness. Right. It'll reprove the darkness. Amen. I'm so thankful, amen, amen, that the Lord has given us His godly conscience. The Bible told us that Tim, Paul was telling Timothy, he says, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God. You know what? The Lord knows that we're feeble folks. He knows that. I, I forget stuff all the time. Yeah. I'll say something and, and I'll turn right around and forget it. I don't mean to. I don't mean to. I, you do it. Uh -huh. You know, and you don't, you, don't, you don't mean to. But the Bible tells us that He wants to put us in remembrance. 
He says, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever Jesus has said unto you. Amen. Brother, it doesn't matter what your opinion is. It matters what Jesus said. Did you hear me? It don't matter what your opinion is. It matters what Jesus says. That's why, brother, when somebody tries to judge me in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or tries to bind me with the law, I'm going to go to the Word of God. And you better be prepared, devil, because glory be to God, hallelujah, I'm not coming at him with, with, a, uh, with a sword and a stone and a, and a spear and a shield. I'm coming at him with the name of the Lord of hosts. Amen. 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 Brother, that, the, the, the sword of the Spirit, brother, is the Word of God. That's right. And brother, that's what we need to have in us. Because when that enemy comes and he tries to tempt you and he tries to tear you down and he tries to make you self-conscious, you say, devil, God has made me born again. Jesus is my Savior. Jesus is my sword. He's my shield. He's my spear. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. Hallelujah. That old giant felt that rock, didn't he? <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to put you in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on my, uh, my hands. God has not given us the spirit of fear. That spirit of fear, brother, it's from the world and the enemy. God has not given you that. But He's given us the spirit of power and of love and a sound mind. Sound mind. Hallelujah. I remember when I was lost, I thought I would lose my mind. Glory be to God, Jesus made me whole. Yeah. Thank Jesus God. made me whole. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Yes, praise God. It's a blessing. There's evidence of it. The Bible said that Peter and John, they were walking one day. They were going about just like you and I do. Going to Kroger. It was Peter and John. They were going to the temple. The Bible says that they came there and there was a poor man sitting outside of there. And he asked the moms. The Bible said that he looked on him. Peter said, look on me. And he looked on him as though he would receive something from him. Yeah. And he said, silver and gold have I none. He said, but such as I have, give I to thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and walk. Brother, Jesus had been crucified long, long before this. He had been crucified. He had already risen from the grave. He had already went back to heaven. He had ascended before 500 men into heaven. The Bible tells us here that, brother, that, that the Holy Ghost had came upon them in Acts chapter 2. And Peter and John were going about the Father's business. And he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and walk. Yeah. Brother, they took Peter and John, and they said, you are, just, you are causing all kinds of problems preaching in this man's name. And they told him that you're not to preach in this man's name. You're, you're, they, they thought that they had done the work themselves. Uh, Peter wasn't going to accept that work, and he wasn't going to accept that credit. It wasn't Peter that did it. He said, by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised by the, from the dead, even by him. Doth this man stand here before you whole? Yeah. That's the very truth today. It's by Jesus that you're made whole. It's by Jesus that this man stands before you whole today. It's Jesus yeah. who does it. This man was, brother, he went running through the temple, yeah. leaping. He couldn't even walk. He begged for money. He could not even walk. And glory be to God, here he was running and leaping and praising God through the Amen. temple. It caused, it caused a commotion. It caused all kinds of commotion. Those people didn't know what to think. They went to Peter and John. Boy, these guys must be gods. No. There's only one God. It's Jesus. And He lives inside of you just as He lived inside of Peter. Brother, it hadn't been very long and Peter was backwards. Did you hear me? Peter got self-conscious. Peter got self-conscious. Because they said, I know you were with him. Yeah. You're a Galilean. Oh, I know not the man. I know not. 
Surely you, your speech betrays you. You know what? You can't hide it. You can't hide it. When you get around and you taste of the goodness of God, you can't hide it. And he said, I, you, your speech betrays you, Peter. And he denied him three different times. He, brother, he got self-conscious. Godly consciousness. Hallelujah. He was godly conscious here. He had the power of God working inside of him. He said, it's by Jesus Christ that this man walks whole before you. The Bible says that they saw the boldness of Peter and John and they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. He said, Brother Troy, I've never been to seminary. Brother Troy, I don't know a whole lot about the Bible. Brother, God will teach you everything you need to know. The anointing which ye have received, the same will teach you. It's 1 John chapter 2. The anointing. What is the anointing? It's the presence of God. It's that simple. It's God's presence inside of you. It's godly consciousness. It's God's presence inside of you that teaches you and shows you all things. Glory be to God. They saw the boldness of Peter and John and they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled. Sure. They were amazed. Sure. They, ama they were amazed. These guys were just fishermen not too long right. ago. Right. They're just regular old blue collar workers. Uh -huh. I mean, they worked for a living. They probably had calluses on their hands from all the work that they had done. They were just, po they were just regular old folks like you and I. But they marveled, and the Bible says that they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. You know what, brother? If Jesus has control of your knowledge, sinners can't even tell whose you are. They can tell that you're a child of God. It'll come out. You can't hide it. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. Brother, your eyes, your thoughts, everything that God calls you to do, brother, will show in your life. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Amen. Amen. No longer self-consciousness. Amen. Godly consciousness has taken control. God has control of your knowledge now. No longer yourself. Amen. Aren't you, aren't you glad that you're not your own? Amen. Aren't you glad? Hallelujah. Amen. It's good Praise to be God. saved. It's good to be saved. If you would, uh, someone have a song that we could sing of invitation. If you, if you would, uh, maybe, maybe maybe some of us get to be like Peter. I believe Peter was saved, amen, when he began to follow Jesus. But he became, became self-conscious. And brother, if, you, if you're consumed with self-consciousness, I want you to know that if you submit yourself to God, He'll give you godly consciousness. He will give you more grace. God loves to give more grace. He gives it to those that are humble, those that are needy. He can't give it to those that are full. He gives it to those that are hungry. And He'll give it to you. He'll help you if you'll submit yourself to Him. Call unto Him and He'll answer you. That's good, buddy. Yes, sir. I was just thinking about that. Hallelujah. Like a bird from prison bars is flown. 
fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away, fly away in the morning, when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away, fly away. Amen. I love that word, hallelujah. And uh, it's, it's such a blessing. The Bible says, extol him that writeth upon the heavens by his name, Jah. Amen. And that halal, it's a praise in the book of Psalms. It's a praise. It's in several chapters in the book of Psalms, and it's called the halal praise. And we extol him that writeth upon the heavens by his name, Jah. So we say, hallelujah, <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Missionary that we send our money to, and I like to read it to you. Uh, every time I send them a check, they send me a, a received and a little letter. But this to me is special. Mm -hmm. So, dear special friends, I have often reminded you of the gospel according to the ten lepers who were healed by our Lord. I rejoice in what the Lord did on their behalf. But I'm always saddened by the fact that only one of the ten returned back to give mm -hmm. glory to God. Yes, that's right. Since the early days of my ministry, I've often prayed that the Lord would give me a grateful heart. Your recent gift gives opportunity to express gratitude to the Lord for your generosity. And I want you to be sure to know that the Lord is touching lives because you care. Amen. May our Lord bless you and keep you through these challenging but always days of wonderful opportunity to share the love and grace of our God. And then at the bottom, he, uh, this was Marvin, wrote, wrote uh, in his handwriting, The Lord opened the gates of heaven and blessed us during our recent ministry in Jerusalem. Your church helped to make it happen, and I am grateful, Marvin. Amen. Amen. And that just, uh, you know, it, what we wanted it to do. Yeah. Right. Amen. That's a blessing. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 for some reason, it just stood out two times in that, in that letter, as I was listening to her read that, he said he was grateful. Yeah. And that's wonderful. It's, it's wonderful to have a grateful heart. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard here just a while back, and it stuck with me. Are you humbly grateful, or are you grumbly hateful? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was a blessing. Yeah. I thought that was a blessing. Amen. Brother Jim. Praise, Praise the Lord. For his mercy and brother. Praise the Lord for His mercy and forever. Praise the Lord for His mercy and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, Ray, Ray, you need some fried chicken. Now, you need some fried chicken.